Hello, my lovely gods and goddesses. Today, we are live from Lawton, Oklahoma. It is uh, January, uh, January <laughs> July 28th, and um, this is my second video that I'm uploading. And I thought tonight I would talk about a little bit about how my universe works, as well as finish doing my makeup look. Now, I did a, a bucket of effort down here, uh, Wheel of Misfortune. <laughs> drawing and uh, the one that came up for tonight was this certified the infinity palette 2 and it is purples and greens and all kinds of colors so this is going to be the color that I'm going to use on my eyes uh, we'll do some contouring with concealer so that you can see a little bit about how best to achieve a really good look with that and uh, then we'll get going on so uh, let's go ahead and get started, and um, we will start with, I've already got my basic foundation on, and it looks a little bit pasty, but that, that will change as I uh, contour and, and, and uh, brush up on this. So I'm going to be using some concealer and then highlighter, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh -uh. Uh, this one is Juvia's Place, and as you can see, it's a little bit darker. And it may not be dark enough, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And uh, where did, there's my brush. Now, again, we're going to go kind of around the uh, the uh, edges of the face. Yeah, a little bit of a, a darker color. I can always put uh, some powder stuff on it here in a little bit. Let me know in the comments how you guys are doing today. I love hearing how how everyone is doing and uh, if they're if they're feeling okay and if uh, if they're managing all right with uh, all this COVID stuff. And I'm <laughs> as I told told you in the last one, uh, I had my own little bout with COVID, um, but I don't think that was the main thing that was wrong with me. And this goes to how things just tend to work in my universe, where uh, most doctors should be looking for zebra for horses, but in my case, they probably should be first looking for zebras uh, for answers because um, <coughs> things are just that strange in my universe. They really are. So, for as an example of how things just kind of go randomly in my universe here, uh, one time I went to the bank. And I handed the lady my military ID. And she said that she couldn't accept that as a form of ID uh, for my, to access my account. And I'm like, at the time, Oklahoma still did not have real ID. So I'm like, my military ID is a little bit more secure than an Oklahoma driver's license is. So I pulled out my driver's license and I handed it to her. And she says, I can't use this either because it's expired. Well, the only other ID I've got is my military ID. So I handed her back my ID, my military ID, and she took it. <laughs> you just told me you couldn't take it, and now you're taking it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's how things go in my universe. Just bizarre, random stuff that really uh, just amazes me sometimes. I mean, and I don't know if it's, you know, if I should ask these people, you know, how did you survive childhood? <laughs> or if I should just, you know, just let it go. Um, which is my, my, uh, yeah, what I'm more likely to do. Just let it go. <laughs> but yeah, that's, um, that's kind of how things went. Now, the reason I'm going down the sides of my nose is I'm going to show how to make the nose look a little bit thinner. Uh, I don't have a problem with my nose. It's a little on the big side, but you know, it's not like Jimmy Durante, so you know. But anyway, just kind of put a little bit of. You can use an eyeliner pencil, or you can use, you know, dark blush or bronzer or whatever on the side of your nose. Dark will shrink it, light will make it shine. 
And so, I may, I may end up using my, uh, my bronzer here just a little bit on it. And then, a lighter foundation to give it kind of a highlight look. And you do like a little lotus here at the top. Down the middle of the nose. And then anywhere else where you want it to kind of uh, be a little bit lighter. Anyway, so that's the kind of stuff that randomly just happens in my universe all the time. All the time. And by all the time, I mean like literally all the time. So I go to the hospital uh, because my husband tested positive for COVID and they wanted me to come in and get tested for COVID because, um, you know, if he had it, I probably did too. Well, that's, that's fine. So I went and I got tested and yes, I did test positive for COVID. No boogie. No. I'm like, okay. It wasn't like it wasn't totally expected uh, when he tested positive. I figured that I would, in fact, end up with. Uh, so I've got Juvia's place. The, the darker one is 18, and then the lighter one is 20. And you can see it's just barely visible. But that's what you want when you're contouring. You don't want it to be obvious that you're, you know, doing these crazy crazy color combinations or whatever. Uh, but anyway, back to my story. Uh, so I went in the hospital and they told me that it looked like I might be trying to go into kidney failure. And I'm like, my urine doesn't smell. It's not a weird color. It is, there's no blood in it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm like, what do you mean that I might be trying to go into kidney failure? It just seemed a little bit bizarre, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> in that moment. It really did. So um, they said, they finally told me, one of the nurses finally told me that sometimes one number will be off and they'll just assume that everything's off. Better safe than sorry, especially with COVID, right? I'm like, well, yeah, okay, whatever. But yeah, there's no, I, I knew there wasn't nothing wrong with my kidneys because uh, I wasn't having any problems with my kidneys. So then, let's see, is this sealed up? Why can't I open this? I think it's sealed up. That may be the problem. Let me fight with the tape here for a minute. So anyway, then when they realized that there was nothing wrong with my kidneys, then it was like, well, maybe it's your liver because your liver numbers are off. And I'm like, I mean, maybe you guys better stop playing house, you know, doctor house, <laughs> and running all these tests on me and try to figure out something that actually works with my symptoms <clears throat> so uh, this one is uh, Revolution Pro Sculpt and Glow I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use it to kind of cover up to go over I guess if you will what I just did um, <clears throat> and so they, they did these other tests on me and then they finally decided that I wasn't you know just dying on the spot and I started showing a little bit of improvement, though not much. Uh, I definitely wasn't uh, any uh, having any more episodes of dizziness. I didn't fall anymore. I didn't have any of the other problems that I had been having. And so they went ahead and sent me home. Three days later, I'd fallen twice, couldn't get up, uh, uh, called a friend of ours to come over. And he helped get me up the first time. But the second time, uh, I said, Jay said, no, we're not doing this every day. You know, you need to go back out to the hospital and, and have them find out what's wrong. So I went back out to the hospital and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And, and they just decided that they really didn't have any place to put me. So they went looking all over the freaking state for some place to, to send me so that I could go in for better testing. And up in Oklahoma City, there's a, a OU community clinic center or something like that. Uh, they, it's, it's a teaching hospital and they had room and they could take me and they said they'd take me. So, uh, ooh, it's a little bit darker than what I expected. So here I am in the ambulance on this ride, in Oklahoma City. I don't have a stitch of clothing on. All I've got is a blanket. <laughs> 
because when they when the ambulance came to the house, they just picked me up off the floor with my blankie and put me in the ambulance to take me to the hospital. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's, let's keep the story going here because that's just my, my ears. Yeah. I, I flashed everybody, you know, the, the ambulance people, the firemen that came, uh, the, the hot female EMT, you know, <laughs> I flashed everybody. And so on this ride, when we finally get up to Oklahoma City, which it took, I don't know, it's on the, it was on the far side of Oklahoma City from my town. So it took a little longer than an hour. I can reach the outskirts of Oklahoma City in like 50 minutes, 50 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic and tolls and all that. How much time I got to spend in the, in the lanes of the tolls. But anyway, so we're up there at the hospital and, uh, they're getting me unloaded and is as it turns out I mean I, and I was in I would say kind of not really good shape but somebody decided that uh, they would have me listed as disoriented which I wasn't but they wanted to put me down as disoriented and uh, so they put me in this this COVID unit and it was really, really just frustrating at the the things that were going on because they were, they kept trying to say things that just were not true, like being uh, incoherent, disoriented. And I'm like, I am not disoriented. People ask me anything, and as it turns out, they can ask me anything. I can answer any question they ask me. It's the only time that I appeared disoriented was kind of like when I was just talking like I am now and I would have to stop and search for words. Well, that made them think that I was disoriented, apparently, even though I kept saying, uh, yeah, no, this is still the sculpting, uh, the pro revolution palette. So anyway, uh, ooh, that's pretty, it's a really pretty color. Anyway, since I'd had that positive COVID diagnosis, they really didn't look any further than that. But they asked me all kinds of questions, like what medications were I on, was I on, and uh, I gave them a list of my medications and told them, you know, they asked for any medical conditions, and I told them that I had Hashimoto's, and Hashimoto's is a thyroid disorder that is autoimmune in nature, and I had was no longer taking the Synthroid because of COVID. I wasn't able to get in to the doctor's office without risking potentially contracting COVID because that's autoimmune and that could be pretty bad. Well, I got it anyway. <laughs> uh, Jay's a, uh, what they called a, an essential worker. And so he had, to, he had to continue working through the, through the, uh, lockdowns and quarantines and everything, which is okay. I mean, yeah. we were a year and a half into it before he got it. So uh, yeah, we, I would say that he did a good job of avoiding getting anything additional, uh, you know, bringing it home at the time. But anyway, so continuing on, I had told them that. I told four people, I think, that I had Hashimoto's and that I wasn't on the medication. They all asked me why I quit taking the medication. I told them, and it just kind of like went in one ear and out the other, and it's like it didn't compute with them. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> there is a condition, or a, a, if someone who has a thyroid condition, such as Hashimoto's, and they suddenly stop taking their thyroid medication, there are a couple of, uh, medical conditions that can occur and one of those is this condition called myxedema myxedema crisis or myxedema coma and you know they they determine coma of course if you actually slip into a coma or if you are having to be put into a coma uh, me medically because you're oxygen levels get too low or whatever. My oxygen levels were not, I mean, I was at 90, which is 
borderline uh, questionable <laughs> as it was. And uh, so, yeah, let's do this. But the the uh, they kept saying, "Well, we may have to intubate you. We may have to intubate you. We may have to." Why? You know, I had double pneumonia. I had two strains of COVID, and the only symptom that I had of COVID that was definitely, absolutely. COVID was a cough. I didn't have any fever. I didn't lose my sense of taste. I didn't lose my sense of smell. I didn't I didn't have any of that going on. Uh, the blush was uh, Farmasi makeup and uh, Tinder blush on, I guess, is the color. I don't know. But anyway, uh, kind of a kind of a deep rose color. So anyway. <laughs> Getting back to the story here. Uh, so I'm up there, and <laughs> where was I? Oh, about three days after I got there, finally, an internal medicine doctor comes up there to see me, and she asked me, you know, uh, how much, how much synthroid were you take? What, what was the dosage on your synthroid? And I told her. And she asked why I quit taking it. I told her. And as time kind of went on, you know, she saw to it that the next day I had my Synthroid. So I started taking my Synthroid again while I was up there. Lo and behold, about three days after I restarted my Synthroid, it started suddenly getting magically better. And on top of that, I ended up losing in those three to four weeks that I was in Oklahoma City, I lost about 60 pounds. And no easy feat. I thought it was because of the COVID. I had no idea. I'd never heard of mixed edema. And so I was just kind of like, just assuming that it was the COVID, which would be, I mean, they were assuming it was the COVID for that matter. And uh, we're treating the COVID. But they also started treating me for the other stuff. Like, you know, they gave me stuff to get water off of me because they were afraid I might be having congestive heart failure. Uh, that was the first diagnosis I got at OU. Uh, and I'm like, I haven't had a heart attack. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't I find something else. <laughs> I was not necessarily a, a, a super cooperative patient. But anyway, um, this is Natasha Denona's uh, eye base primer. my favorite and it works the best I think out of all of all of them that I've tried certainly better than the one I had on the other day so they get me started back on all my meds and I start showing improvement eventually they send me home and I'm just assuming that you know it was the COVID that I had and, and just kind of went on about my merry way I was very weak I had trouble getting up on the porch I had I had issues with um, with just not so much with passing out or anything like that since I got home, but weakness and generalized weakness and really uh, that's that is a symptom of COVID, but not only COVID. And one day I'm just kind of browsing around here on YouTube and I come across this channel for medical students, and it's about the endocrine system and it was specifically about hypothyroidism, which that's where Ajimoto's falls. And uh, anything that has to do with Hashimoto's, you know, I'm nosy. Uh, I started watching it. And he, they got down to where if a patient stops taking their medication, this is what can happen. And they were talking about um, different, different you know, hair falling out and what, you know, whatever. And then they said, or they could go into a myxedema, coma, or crisis. And I'm like, what is this? I've never heard of this. And nobody told me anything about it. So, I go and look it up. I forget, it wasn't WebMD, I think it was Harvard School of Medicine, but wherever. Anyway, so I started reading the symptoms off of, from myxedema. And as I'm reading those, I'm like, that sounds exactly like what was going on. And as soon as they put me on medication with Synthroid, it started getting magically better. 
so I think I don't blame the doctors for it, it wasn't actually a misdiagnosis so much as a missed diagnosis because I did have COVID I it was pretty bad that by itself but uh, most of the symptoms that I had fit in perfectly with the myxedema I had swelling on my feet and ankles and legs which is why they put me on the Lasix because I was obviously retaining water and uh, the picture that was on there was of somebody whose ankles were like grapefruits and, and the skin was really stretched it's painful to walk uh, and there, there are the whole list of things and I'm like that sounds exactly like what I had so I think I had both of those things going on at the same time and it, it was just a fluke that they got me started back on on uh, on uh, my synthroid and it and it stopped the progression of whatever was going on so I'm glad for that okay so anyway but that's what I mean look for zebras and not horses because they weren't looking at myxedema and it's rare but 20%, I think they, I think the, the classroom instructor said, 20% of all people who actually go in mix, myxedema crisis actually die. So it was very serious. And they just, they just missed it because um, I did test positive for COVID. I'm going to start with this color right here. And it is called, um, Parade, P-A-R-R. R E D I think. I don't know. I don't I'm not sure what color it is. But I think that's what it's that's what it says. So uh kind of a oops. Kind of a really nice almost royal purple color. So that's not the only thing. I mean, it took years and years and years to find, to get the diagnosis of Hashimoto's to begin with. I had known since I was probably 15 that something was wrong with my thyroid. I knew it. A lot of my doctors knew it too. They just could never get the numbers to line up with the uh, presumption of it, I guess. They all knew, but you know, if you can't get the numbers on tests to come out and say so, uh, insurance kind of frowns on any kind of treatments. So, uh, it, was, it was just a, a waiting game. And it just so happened that one time after Jay and I had gotten married, uh, a test came back that was crazy enough that they said, whoa, something's going on here. And uh, Dr. Mariano determined that it was in fact Hashimoto's. So that's kind of a pretty color. It's different, 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 different. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't go all the way down like I did with the orange, it's because I'm going to blend another color in there. And so, really, let me pick up my brush. Anyway, so what he said was that because uh, I have extreme sensitivity to cold, and I do, I have said for years and years and years that cold makes my body hurt. It just makes my body hurt. And he said that because of that, then uh, there's a pretty, pretty good chance that it was Hashimoto's. And uh, so, yeah. That's, that's what we ended up with. So he got me on Synthroid and got my dosage to the right amount, or pretty close to the right amount. And then COVID. About the time I'm finally getting that taken care of, COVID hit. And I stayed home because I didn't want to be exposed. Um, I will say this, that it, it wasn't uh, quite the, the disaster that I thought it would be getting COVID it, it was bad enough and uh, Jay, Jay was pretty sick and I was obviously sicker but it wasn't necessarily COVID that was making me so much sicker 
Ah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, not much in the way of fallout. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, and then the next Really? Okay, and then I'm going to blend into, I think, this lighter blue here. Top middle one. The top middle one. It's kind of a Mediterranean blue almost. And, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to try it. I think it says hibiscus. I think that's what it says. So, that was my, uh, vanity. <laughs> yeah! No, let's don't go looking like me. We all, we all know that one, but, right? Everyone knows who Mimi is, right? Well, maybe not my European friends, but those that are more local right now. <laughs> the more American friends that are watching. Yeah, they'll know who Mimi is. I'm trying to avoid the Mimi look. Mimi is a character on a TV show, or she was a character, I should say, on a TV show called The Jim Carrey Show. And she she wore like this powder blue eyeshadow that covered her completely with this real heavy eyeliner and, and she was obnoxious. <laughs> she fun to watch though. She really was. Okay. And then uh, hmm, what should we do now? And then the lightest blue in the top row. Kind of a powder powder blue. That's about the shade that we used. <laughs> Only I'm not going all the way up to my eyebrow with it. <laughs> and she went all the way up to her eyebrow. Let me tell you. Mostly I'm just doing a, well, not quite a cut crease, but kind of in the, uh, in the, the, inspired by cut creases. Go there. And so after, I guess maybe four weeks in the hospital, close to four weeks up in Oklahoma City, they uh, went ahead and finally released me so I could come home. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been crazy ever since. It has been nice. Okay, now I'm going down into the bottom corner, the white, as a topper. Yeah, my my life has has always been one of those places where you know, crazy happenings take place. And by crazy happenings, I mean one time I I went to a convenience store to get a soda, and when I <laughs> I grabbed a straw and stuck it into the cup and then tried to take a big swig out of it, nothing was coming out. So I was like. Dude, why isn't there anything coming out? Well, <laughs> as luck would have it, I pulled the straw out. I was looking for any, any uh, cracks or problems with the with the straw <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> the far end, the end that I had stuck into the cup, had been was still still shut. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, a little. Okay. Oh, this is like nothing's distracting me. Yeah. You won't let me help. I'm good yeah, helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I'm good helping. Okay. Ripper number two. Uh, this one, I don't. This one's like, there's no name on, on the brush. I don't know 
Probably got it from Ipsy. Uh, then we're going to go, I think we're going to go with this purple. Ooh, that's the heart. That's almost darker than the other one. Dun, 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 dun. Tap, tap, tap. Post a picture of that straw on my Facebook. One of my friends, he commented, he says, Those are the new diet straws. Haven't you seen those in the store? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but okay. <laughs> it really was kind of fun. It was annoying, but it was fun too. Just saying. to this one and this one is uh, unique products Y O U N I T U E. I do sell unique if you would like one of these brushes let me know I'll get you a link that's a deluxe brush and uh, I'm going to take this it's kind of a shimmery blue put that on Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. That's very pretty. That's a very pretty color. Nice color. Yep, that's a good color. That's a good color. So let's go back in and deepen up some of these some of these colors. Just follow me, that's all. And along with uh, with all of that, there is always the the uh, fun of other stuff that's just kind of randomly happened in, in my life that's weird. Uh, like one time, uh, someone had come to my house that I, I knew this person. I did know this person. And they went into my backyard because they were going to tap on my bedroom window because they didn't want to scare me, but I really didn't feel about What? <laughs> and that's the kind of people I have in my life. Well, some of them. I like that. All right. Now then, we are going to go under here with uh, this blue, the first blue that I used. We will use this as the primary color down here. Yeah, I've got all kinds of interesting things in my <laughs> in my past. And people, and then I've got so many some weirdos, and that was one of those. Oh, he meant my first pit bull. <laughs> Is that a pit bull in the backyard? Yeah, why'd you get a pit bull? Uh, because people like you. <laughs> Just saying. Well, this is a nice, very nice color combination, I think. Okay, now then, we're going to go into the darker purple color right here, kind of in the middle. And 
then for the I'm gonna use this one because it's kind of kind of flat and go back into this kind of shimmery color. And we'll do that one here. I do I do? Okay, and now this color, this color was on the outer and the base there. This color was in the middle and in the middle. This one was the inner side and the inner. And then up this one in the crease to kind of blend that in. That one was the one, this one is the one that I used as a liner, uh, like the cut crease sort of look. And then this one down here is the one that I used as a tabra. And those are the colors that we've got from the Certify Affinity 2 color that I've used. What do you think so far? Does that look good? I hope so. I hope so. Now. I think I will use black on the top, black liner on the top, and should I use black or should I use like a pop of some other color on the bottom? Like a, I've got a one of the sugar drizzle colors out, and I think it's like a bright green. So I will take whatever. I'll be thinking about that here for the next few minutes. Which one do I want? And again, I'm not doing the, doing the wings because um, I know there's got to be a way to do them that's kind of uh, not too not too difficult. But yeah, okay. That whole that whole zebras thing, you know. <laughs> Finding something that works for me is not always easy. Well, another time I uh, I had, had sort of green, uh, and arthros can be done on my dog because of Team J. And uh, a funny thing about that arthros, uh, a couple of days after that, I started coughing up blood, and so I'm back out. I went out to the emergency room, and, uh, and they were looking at sending me to to uh, Fort Sam Houston, which, uh, okay, that would be all right down in San Antonio. Uh, good, good doctors there, and because they thought maybe there was a problem with my lungs. And the doctor who had done the surgery had gotten word that it was in the emergency room. He came down there and he was like, whatever. <laughs> let's go take her over to Dr. Zapp's office and let's see what we can get done there. So Dr. Zapp takes and puts a scope up my nose <sighs> after he shoots it up with, I don't know, some kind of deadener. And, um, and here's the sugar drizzle color. Isn't that pretty green? Yeah, we'll use that. And uh, so he shoots the stuff up my nose. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they found what was causing that in my right about here. And apparently, that when they had had me intubated for the surgery, or when they pulled pulled the tube out, then uh, scratched me. And then that had fallen off. That's kind of just random stuff that nobody else ever has happen in their life. <laughs> Only me. <laughs> I'm not sure how that happens. Oh, look at that pop. Oh, that's got some really good pops. Can't wait to get my pictures done for this to get them uploaded on Instagram. So, just saying.
Who's a weirdo? Yeah, we can talk about some random stuff that happens uh, on my lives from time to time. Uh, I have two pit bulls, and uh, sometimes they fight, and you'll probably hear them at some point in the background. One of them sounds like a cow giving birth. Uh, and the other one, she's just kind of, you know, laid back, but they they do tend to get into little squabbles from time to time. And they have, I used to have a panel screen up behind me instead of a drop. And uh, so it's backed up there. And one time they were wrestling around or play fighting or whatever it is dogs do. <clears throat> and um, they rolled into the panel screen several times, knocked it over. Uh, it happened on probably 10 different, you know, 10 different lives before they actually... <laughs> until they broke the screen so, and it crashed into my china cabinet so it broke out of the china cabinet yeah that's, that's uh, just how it is here okay this I'm going to put this lip color on but we're fixing to eat dinner so I'm going to wait till after dinner if you want you know look, look for me on Instagram and you can see the pictures of, of the finished result, uh, but this it's a uh, BH Cosmetics. It's a liquid lipstick color, and I think I will put these on. If I don't glue on my lids yet, because um, that happens. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that happens in my universe. Is that I'll glue my lids. Uh, that I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll do. So, besides the lip color and the eyelashes, this is the finished product. And I hope that you've enjoyed this. And next time, uh, well, besides the besides the dogs crashing into that, uh, I had some jewelry pegboards up, and they crashed into that and knocked them over. They have, uh, Jay was in the bedroom one night, and didn't realize that the camera could see him in the bedroom. And normally he turns off the light and then gets undressed. And not this night. Everybody got the full money. <laughs> I'm like, ah, yay! <laughs> so I was like covering up the other camera. I can see you. And he turned around, and yeah, they. It's a full moon, and and then it was the other side. <laughs> And that's the kind of stuff that happens in my universe randomly all the time. Just weird, crazy happenings. Anybody else have that kind of stuff happen in their, in their universe? Let me know. Put it down in the comments. Be proud. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. And uh, like I said, I'll be uploading the finished look on Instagram and also my Facebook if you're, if you're more of a Facebook person. And I will definitely be seeing you guys again soon. I hope that you enjoyed the look. Uh, I hope I told everything I was using. I'm still new to this, people. You're going to have to give me some, some leeway. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you can't be good, be careful. And if you can't make good decisions, then carry bail, bail money because you'll probably need it. I know I do. <laughs> because, you know, that's just how my universe goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it goes. But anyway, I'll be seeing you again soon, and we're going to get through this bucket of effort um, pallets eventually. <laughs> There's a lot of them down there, trust me. Love you all. Take care.